So here's a little story about why, if you're a manufacturer, you need a graph database. Have a look at the diagram on the right. It's a production system for building cars. At the top, you can see car parts, including two different kinds of wheels, and in the centre, the engine, which I'm using as a shorthand for all the other parts required to build the car. Below that, you can see that your factory builds two different models, sports cars and SUVs. And below that, you can see it has two orders, one from Bob, who wants to buy a sports car, and one from Alice, who wants to buy an SUV. Unfortunately, one critical part of the SUV is unavailable, the off-road wheels. This means that Alice's order cannot be fulfilled. But you've already bought a whole load of parts to make that SUV. So here's the question, what can you build instead that uses the parts you've already built, requires as few additional parts as possible, and for which you already have an order so you can sell it straight away? Rescheduling a production line is not an easy problem, but it's not hard for a graph database. The graph starts at the part that's unavailable, the SUV wheels, and traces along the links down to the cars it can no longer build because they rely on those off-road wheels. It then traces out to find all the parts that it was going to use to build those SUVs and has in inventory, here shown as the engine, and traces down to see what other car part cars it can make with those car parts instead. It then has to trace back up to see the parts it would need to order specially so it can find the set of cars it could build with the fewest changes and then down to Bob to find the car orders it can sell. It's not a hard problem for a graph, although it does require some computing power. The same cannot be said for a conventional database. Have a look at the tables on the left. You have a table for parts, a table for products, and a table for orders. It's actually exactly the same information as on the right, but you have to look pretty hard at it to work that out. And finding the car to make is even harder because for every link on the graph on the right, you have to code a table join on the left. First, you'd have to join the parts that are unavailable to the products they go into to find the products you can no longer make. Then, you'd have to join the parts relating to those products back to the inventory to see what parts you have available. Then, join the inventory back to the product to see which cars those inventory parts can still build and then join back to the inventory again to see what parts you still need to get in order to build the car. You then have a set of cars you could build and a set of parts you still need. Then if you join this to the customer table, you can filter out only the cars you can sell. And finally, out of all of that, you can choose which car you're going to make. Now that is a lot of joins, but in fact, it's actually a significant over simplification. This is because within the one record engine, there's a lot of hidden complication. Often, one part requires another. For example, a bigger engine may require more powerful brakes. There may be all sorts of hierarchy, structure and rules hidden within your PLM system. Your joins and queries will need to take that into account when you're searching the engine part. And that could require thousands of lines of code with multiple joins and queries in order to enumerate every combination. Or you could have your PLM system enumerate this for you ahead of time, which would result in an enormous data set. In many situations, this is a manual task which can take weeks. A graph database can do it with a few lines of code which runs in seconds. So there you go. One of many cases where you can do things in a graph you simply can't do with a conventional database.